Welcome to Sunday Night. I'm Dr. Boz, and we are coming to you live from snowy South Dakota. Uh, I couldn't be more excited that this is the week I get to speak in Puerto Rico. <laughs> the equator never looked so nice. <laughs> Uh, I am coming to you live on Sunday nights, and as per usual, I'm going to start out by just checking my numbers, uh, giving you a little bit of uh, uh, live uh, accountability, but also just to be the demonstration that checking your numbers isn't just for beginners, isn't just for people struggling. It really does help even the experts <laughs> at keto stay solid. Uh, your um, uh, Blood sugars, blood ketones are the, are uh, checkable uh, in many ways, but the gold standard is still the uh, blood ketones. And um, we had uh, supper, actually we had, we had uh, food a little later in the day than usual, but um, I'll just tell you this 2.3 is a trend over the last week and is gonna be the focus of my evening. So that is probably because I ate within about the last, Mm, I think it's in about the last three hours as, as how long it's been since I've eaten. That is my one meal a day. Um, as I continue on my little journey tonight, if you would be really nice and just let me know that uh, you can hear me. Uh, I have uh, a, re a reputation to protect that um, <laughs> without a sound check once a month that doesn't work, um, you'll know that I've been abducted or something. Uh, the other thing that I, uh, besides checking my numbers, which I have been doing on Instagram now for the better part of, mm, I think it's been at least a year I've been doing that. Um, I do a fast once a week uh, and the fast leads to, just so you know, I put a, a scoop of BHB in there. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this as we go on. Um, but I like to do that in front of you so you can see what I'm doing. I also check those numbers live, not knowing what they are before I do it. So <laughs> just to, 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 oh, thank you for the thumbs up on the sound. That's a big deal. Oh, and you know what? This uh, little guy isn't doing what he's supposed to. Let's get those comments doing live comments, uh, interacting a little better. All right. Uh, let's see if we can make that move. Oh, there we go, yes, okay. So um, without um, a, some technical problem, it just wouldn't be a real Sunday night with me. So I have an interesting show tonight that I am going to share with you. And uh, I'm gonna start out by saying um, it has been uh, a struggle week uh, in the last like three weeks for me. And uh, so we're gonna talk about when it's me, <laughs> when I'm the one struggling, uh, what do I do? So I will, I'm super excited to show you what happened this past week. Uh, I am gonna start out with a couple of, um, couple of announcements that I did, a cup, uh, I did last week and it worked out really well. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna start by uh, looking at um, a few things that I think are, they, they turned out really good, so I'm gonna do them again. Uh, first of all, the um, audiobook giveaway. I've done that, I've, I tried that about a year ago before Audible improved their process, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> I gave away a book, I could never figure out who was the first person, so then I had several people that won at the same time, it was awful. Um, so their process has changed, and uh, the audiobook is the book Any Way You Can, uh, the book that I wrote, and I have a free giveaway. So um, this is the book that I wrote. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this later in a minute. Um, and the, the book is a great beginner's guide and a teaching tool that you, if you haven't listened to it, it really does have profound impact on people. I've been a, a teacher, I think, <laughs> since I was in medical school. Like teaching about medicine is what I do. And you can tell that I love it, that's why I'm doing this show. But you can also uh, get that if you want the impact on how do you change behavior, you need to tell stories. So I used a very intimate story uh, in the book Any Way You Can about my mother. And if you wait till the end of the podcast tonight, you're gonna see one uh, free code that you can type in. And last week it totally worked, so I'm gonna do it again. Um, but if you don't have an Audible account, the, the, it's still a fair 
playing field. So this website that I'm showing you at the beginning is uh, the dot com is for uh, the U.S. and um, the dot uh, uh, co dot uk is for the uh, United Kingdom area. I actually don't know all the countries that covers. I had I had a couple of people say they thought it was. Anyway, we'll see. You can try it if it works great. But if you put in that ACX dash promo code, you don't have to have an Audible account. You just get to download the book. So that's what I. It is it is a fair <laughs> playing field out there. Um, a couple of the things that uh, I am super excited about is this is the week I get to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, there is a international speak. There are twelve international speakers coming together in Puerto Rico for two days of keto, and I am one of those. Uh, and I'm super excited. I get invited to a lot of places to speak, but with um, the <laughs> um, uh, teenagers and clinic and just busy life, um, I don't say yes to a lot of them. So uh, my husband and I have never been to Puerto Rico. When they asked, I usually filter it through him. Do you want to go there? <laughs> and he's like, I've never been. Let's go. So we are going there. And there is a, um, that's the website. If you, if you haven't registered and you think you could make it, it's kind of short notice, but I think it's worth just throwing that out there. Um, this is the, the social media posts that are out there about it. Uh, but the coolest part about this uh, speech is I am, I've been asked to speak about cancer and how it impacts the ketogenic diet, which is my mom had had cancer for 10 years when we started the ketogenic diet three years ago. She now just graduated to 75 years old and uh, has um, the bragging rights that she is off of chemo for six months. She just had her doctor's appointment last week with still normal white blood cell counts for the first time in over, over a decade, uh, and that's off chemo on a strict ketogenic diet, and we're gonna talk about the metabolism of what happens when you are um, struggling with uh, cancer and what the ketogenic, what's the science behind the ketogenic diet. But the cool part is, uh, in Puerto Rico, they speak two languages, and even though they said everybody, most of the lectures are going to be in English, uh, so if you don't speak Spanish like me, that's great. But I have two kids that speak Spanish fluently, and this is my youngest son, Chancellor, who will be going with me to translate my um, uh, to translate my uh, speech on cancer. So he has been studying the words like. Um, Acetyl-CoA, <laughs> mitochondria, uh, but there's not that many big birds in it, but there's enough that he had to study. So uh, he will be joining me on stage to translate. I'm really excited about that. Um, if you are going to Puerto Rico and you haven't bought tickets, but you're looking to go, or if you know somebody in Puerto Rico, but geez, invite them and you know use this promo code to give them a little discount to get into the event. Uh, we, want, we want a good show, we want a good turnout. Um, you know, the last thing that I am telling folks um, is that the book, Any Way You Can, has a new cover. Uh, again, I think in life you do things the first time and if you can forgive yourself when you don't do it great, uh, then that's how, that's how success really happens, is continuing to try again. So if you uh, are looking for the book, it does have a different cover. Uh, it hasn't changed on the inside, but you you can also find it in Spanish and in uh, Chinese. Um, and you can find it in bookstores as well as in uh, libraries. And if you don't find it there, please ask the librarian to order it. Um, this was a big deal. I didn't know how to do this, was to get the book in libraries. I tried just taking it to libraries. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, Google warned me about it, but I thought, well, let's just see what happens. And yeah, indeed, we had to uh, work on uh, getting the um, getting the book in in libraries became through this process anyway so you can go to Barnes and Noble and request the book uh, my husband went into Barnes and Noble and said I said can you just go check to make sure this works and he walked in there to ask and the guy behind the counter was having a little rough day uh, and said I've had so many people come in and ask for that book I am not looking it up again <laughs> and I'm like what He's had a lot of people come in and ask for the book. So again, I guess if, if life was perfect, I would have figured this out a long time ago. But here we are. <laughs> again, forgive yourself, right? Um, so I look at uh, some, of the some of the comments out there about the weather. Yes, in South Dakota, it's snowing. It's 30, 
five, four, three, two degrees, <laughs> it's snowing. And um, yes, the equator looks great. So join me if you're looking for some keto lectures. It looks like it's a great lineup. Some of my favorite speakers are gonna be there. Um, I, I talk a lot about uh, following the articles that come out of the uh, Applied Performance uh, Science Institute. And uh, one of their lead researchers, uh, Dr. Lowry, is going to be there. So I can't wait to just pick his brain on a few things. So anyway, thank you for uh, um, checking on the sound. Now we're going to get to what I want to share with you. OK, before I hop over to this, making hopefully all this works, because I've never done this before. <laughs> Brace yourself. Uh, I struggled these last few weeks. I kind of opened up the show telling you about that where um, I've been keto for over three years. And if you read the book, yeah, I, I, did, I wasn't perfect at the beginning either. But as life goes on, you do kind of keep acquiring skill sets in the ketogenic diet. How to fast, what can you have when you fast? Can you get through it without bone broth? Um, one of the things I, I became a huge fan of is peak teas. Um, they have a cinnamon flavor out now, and it's just one of the other things that uh, they do have great antioxidants. Uh, tea is wonderful, but I grew up drinking coffee. So, and then coffee without my creamer in it was kind of hard. <laughs> so I switched flavors and went to some peak teas. Uh, definitely love the cinnamon flavor that's out there now. If you haven't done that, it's just another skill set where I couldn't go to just salt and water right away. It was, I failed, I kept failing. Um, he, uh, you know, I had people call and say, you know, here's what I've tried. Can I do this? You know, does it break my fast? And, um, you know, as I watch to see how much of um, the, these chemicals affected me, uh, I was checking numbers. And boy, I could have a lot of um, bone broth and there was a certain layer of, uh, or a certain amount of bone broth that totally, it was like I ate a meal. Um, I also could do a pretty good job of uh, keeping uh, the right things in the house, um, but I would have this gnarly habit of, uh, you know, these macadamia nuts are great, and then they were salty, and this is perfect, this is on the keto diet, and I would start eating them at about 8.30 at night, and nobody else in this lineup was, or nobody else in the house was eating them, it was me. So the bottom of the jar would come. You know, every two weeks I was getting more macadamia nuts, wondering, you know, why are my numbers better? And I had to find a way to say no to uh, certain things that I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do at first, so. Um, but then life goes on, and in the last few weeks I've really, um, you know, I, I, for those that are in the Sioux Falls area, uh, I have a support, support group that I host for free in my community about the ketogenic diet. It meets on Friday mornings, and we talk about struggles, we talk about what these supplements do, um, but uh, usually I'm focusing on other people. So I use this show as a place to host some very interesting cases, uh, like a type one diabetic and how would I manage that? Somebody who's had severe uh, high blood sugars but is super motivated after 20 years of diabetes. And then another patient that we're following is a lean, uh, strong female uh, who's in her 30s and is got a you know, looks like she has a great metabolism until you start looking at the numbers and she just can't seem to get the ketones up. So these have been really great teachable cases, but this week I'm going to use the teachable case of me. <laughs> so um, I was on the struggle wagon by trying to do, I'm pushing towards a deadline. I'm pushing to get the second book written and I've been spiraling. Uh, like it just seems like I need to read more and more and more about the ketogenic diet in order to feel like I can get this written right, or I just, I, I was having a failure. And part of it was the concentration. So in the, in the danger of that mindset, I go back to look at what things have I done to improve my mental performance. And it really was get a Dr. Boz ratio that's below 40 most of the time. Uh, and I knew what I was doing wrong. <laughs> so let's go back. We're gonna take a look um, at uh, Instagram. So I have said in the past that you should follow me on Instagram and you can see that, um, that uh, the Instagram tag at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, it is something I was not gonna do because it's another social media and another place that I'm not super about checking all these messages yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. So have, give me a little forgiveness here. Uh, but it's amazing actually 
um, how much the Instagram um, has been a place that really works well for following numbers. So here's my Instagram profile, and I'm just gonna scroll back, and we're gonna, I want you to notice that each color represents a different week of my fasting. So there was a brown, then there's an orange, then there's a purple. Those were all supposed to be <laughs> the same color, but I forgot what shade of purple I picked. Um, and then those, there's a teal blue and then a light green. And we're just gonna start at the pinks, which is probably about, I don't know, five weeks ago. And so as I click on this, you're gonna see that um, what I do on Instagram is I post a picture of my glucose and a picture of my ketones, and then I do the calculation of my Dr. Boz ratio. Each Sunday, I start a fast, and the fasting started over a year ago. I think I'm like somewhere in the 15, 17, 18 months now of once a week doing a fast with a goal not set by a timer, but instead set by my metabolism. Like I'm pushing my metabolism to reach a Dr. Bowes ratio of 40 or less. And as I do that, um, I have learned a lot about my own metabolism, but I also see what these mistakes do. So as with anything, when, when the world was watching, um, on my fast, you know, I'm posting these numbers out there. I do really good. I'm great. So here's an example. I have 22 hours fasted. My sugar was 98. My ketones were 1.7. That's a Dr. Bob's ratio of 57. So as you might know, um, in the, let's see, I think this is the right way to push that. Ah, let's see if it works. Yeah, so then uh, this, is, this is a few hours later, it's 30 hours, my ketones went down, my glucose went up, so my ratio is worse, but that's not uncommon. I had a tough, I put in there, like when things go wrong, I try to talk about what's happened. You know, sleep, huge issue. I don't care if you're a doctor or not, if I don't sleep well or the stress is high, it does change how, I, um, uh, how my numbers look. So now I'm 60 hours and I think I had to go to the hospital that night again. So I was really sleepy and it was stressful and my ratio was 60. Um, so I still haven't reached 40 and I've fasted for 40 hours uh, or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, that was 40 hours. So then the next, the next picture shows a little over 48 hours, but now I can start to see those ketones were rising a little bit. Um, the, the glucose was 86 and I warn people that as I look at these numbers, um, your numbers are always going to look better later on in the day. Uh, and here was, um, a, a later in the day ratio, but I'd fasted 60 hours. And I know that if I get to that, that 72 hours of fasting, that's like three days of fasting. My family kind of goes on strike. <laughs> so I was really happy to see a good ratio by that point. Here you'll see that the color changed. So now this is the next week. And uh, once again, my sugars were 86, ketones 1.4. I'm only at 20 hours there. I think this week at uh, 30 hours, I had a really good number. And I think this week was the week I uh, took a BHB on my live, which was my first clue about what I, I, was, I was having trouble. So by 42 hours, um, the Dr. Rose ratio is down to 51. That's a little closer. Um, but you can see I broke my fast there. Something happened where I didn't quite reach my goal. Um, and I find that, you know, when people are asking me, how are you doing? You know, I didn't get to see your last numbers. Sometimes it's honest that I just forgot to look before I ate. So I'm like, ah, shoot. Uh, but sometimes it's that I just, I'm done. I don't feel good. I made it plenty far. But I kept saying that week after week that I wasn't reaching my goal multiple weeks in a row. Um, you know, here's a, a ratio of 53. That's not, that's not too bad for me. Um, but as I got up to 40 hours, then the stress hits in. Uh, if, I start, if I cheat at night, then the next day. <laughs> so this week is even worse because I, um, I think I had a glass of wine on the Saturday night before this fast. So again, you can see the color changed. So that's, um, uh, it's still, you know, 36 hours since that glass of wine, but it totally affects my numbers. And so now it took a little while to clean it out. And here I am at 39 hours with a glucose of 107 and ketones at 1.1. So my ratio went up and, you know, again, keeping it real is what I've found is helpful for patients to see. This is hard. Okay. But what happens when you're accountable to the numbers is that I knew I was doing some things that I shouldn't like those macadamia nuts didn't used to be on the grocery list for a long time. 
and now they were back. <laughs> and then I found myself doing that again, uh, which again, when I'm stressed, oh, this is an awesome game. If you've never played uh, this game called Cash Flow, it's kind of based on the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This is just a picture in my Instagram that we play a game every Sunday. And if you've never played that game with your kids, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Anyway, uh, but here's that week, the orange week. So 20 hours, I was at, uh, pretty good. Oh, this is the vaping lecture I gave at my kids' school. Again, I can't skip over those, so I'm <laughs> hanging there. At 28 hours, I've got a ratio of 34. And I'll tell you, when I hit the ratio that's really good, I tend to, um, you know, it's easy. Once you get a uh, ketones of 2.5, you, you just don't have hunger. So um, I was curious. Okay, so this is the part that I want to focus on. This brown week is what I did this week. So if you go back to that Instagram page and you scroll through these, these color-coded weeks of me fasting, you're going to notice that um, the numbers were awesome about six months ago, and you can just see that over time, they're not as awesome. Okay, and I know it, and I know it in my whole heart because I'm human. And so um, I was trying to push the fast longer. I was running into schedule issues that if I couldn't get to that ratio that I needed at that 36 or 48 hours, that pushing it to 60 completely disrupted my family. I got crabby. Um, that's not the best place when you're raising teenagers is for the parent to be irritable. So I said, all right, how do I clean up my numbers? And the reason the numbers weren't good is because even though I could do a great job during the fast, I was cheating, not really cheating, I was just like pushing the edge. Um, Cause I was still keto, I was still one meal a day, um, but I'd been black coffee for the longest time. I'd been, you know, using my peak teas and then I didn't. I was like, cream tastes so good. You know, uh, that process of, you know, improving, uh, the, the metabolism, I had, I had done a pretty good job, but the, the danger of that was these habits sneak back in. And I take care of chronic disease. One of the chronic diseases I work on is addiction. And you, the parallels between addiction, uh, in fact, the support group that I run on Fridays, I run just like I would run one of my addiction meetings with check-ins and no scolding or shaming. Uh, we do not bring the drug of choice to the group, meaning there is no food at Keto Group. Uh, we are here to learn about how to not do that. Uh, we, we don't bring booze to AA or you know, to the addiction groups. Uh, we don't bring food to the Keto Group. Uh, but the power of uh, that accountability and teaching those um, stressful moments was staring me in the face. So I said, I announced this last week at our Keto support group that I was gonna do this. And then I said it last week on the on the show to follow me on Instagram. And the brown is what, what the Instagram is all about. So here was fasting 15 hours. This was me waking up Monday morning and I had pledged that I couldn't do a longer fast. I needed to go backwards in my fasting skills, master them again, and then I'll have to march forward again. So what does it look like to go backwards? I was salt and water, that's what my fasts were, but because the rest of the week had been littered with these habits that weren't so good. I needed to clean up my metabolism and uh, improve the process that my cells were doing uh, the rest of the week so that when fasting would come, I could reach that Dr. Boz ratio in a time that still fits my life. Because like I said, 60 hours of fasting, my kids are looking for a different mom. <laughs> They're like, Rawr. So here was 15 hours, you'll notice that um, when I said, well, what, what would I do to go backwards if I couldn't do the strict fast of salt and water? Um, some of the things that I tell patients to do when they're struggling is, uh, first of all, try to get to one meal a day. So 24 hours, you know, master that 24 hour um, skill before you go forward. Uh, so if you are trying to pick the best time for that one meal a day, I get the, Families and kids, it makes the evening meal the easiest uh, for scheduling, but for metabolism, it's probably closer to the noon time uh, that your one meal should be, or even in the morning, um, if you, especially if you're insulin resistant to push the meal earlier in the day. But don't get hung up on that. That's a goal, that's not where you start. So my our one meal a day is usually in the evenings, that's when I usually eat. And when I fast, I really clean up those um, that metabolism. But during this week, I said, all right, 
I am going to use exogenous ketones every day in the afternoon. And the purpose of doing that was to raise my ketones to prepare for the hardest part of my day. And the hardest part of my day is the evening when I've, you know, the schedule's different, there's food around, there's kids to feed, there's a, you know, band concert, debate, parents meeting, you know, there's all kinds of things I need to do. And schedules turn into a disaster when I get uh, irritable or when I get too busy and when I don't have a plan. And so if I could get the ketones higher, I knew that my, my cravings would be less. Um, but I wasn't really, I would do ketones on the show, but uh, just to show you how they work, but I really wouldn't do them routinely because I'm keto adapted. I don't need that kind of help, right? So I said, yeah. Anyway, so here was Monday morning, 107, a doctor, doctor Boz ratio of 107. So somebody would ask, well, how do you calculate a Dr. Boz ratio? Um, you take the glucose and you divide by ketones. I'll show you a slide on that in just a second. Um, so as you go to the next time I checked it, we we're at 24 hours, so that's somewhere around noon. But, um, and I had some, I don't know if you can see them in here, they're like, you can't count this, you drank ketones on your show yesterday, your ketones are high because you drank ketones. And I'm like, no, that's the cool part about what we're gonna learn tonight. Uh, these ketones are only gonna last a few hours in your circulation. They are, we're gonna talk about what that looks like. Uh, so as I go to the next numbers, um, Oh, this is my social media post about this week. You've already seen that. Um, so this was Monday night where I was, I was stressed. Um, and so at supper, I had one fourth of a cup of bone broth. Um, and this was supposed to be my fasting night. So usually I wouldn't even be at the supper table, but um, I was trying to find a way to find my bearings again, go back to something that was easier, master that, and then I'll try to advance as I, as I do these next few weeks. So supper last at, on Monday night was bone broth, a fourth of a cup. And this was, I think, um, yeah, this was Tuesday morning, right? So ketones were 2.8 and glucose was 74. There are no ketones in my system at this point. They, as far as exogenous ketones, I've made all those ketones. Um, and we're gonna do some teaching mo moments about that. So kind of keep in mind what you see these ketones at 2.8, 2.4. Um, the next one, I think, Ah, look at that. Yeah, ketones of 3.8. I haven't seen those numbers in ages. And again, um, it was day two, so that's Tuesday, and I'm checking this before I took the ketones that day. So, and I'm, I'm amazed, actually. <laughs> like, what the heck? That's so good. Uh, I just didn't expect my metabolism to respond to what this churn was. So, uh, so supper on Tuesday night, there, I served pork and fat. Um, and so this was Wednesday morning. So glucose of 85 and ketones of two. That's awesome. It's probably been a long time since I've had a Wednesday morning look that good because usually Tuesday night was the end of my fast and I would, I would eat too much. I would binge eat. I, I deserve this food. I've, I've fasted. I'm fine. You know, and taking it, I would overdo it. Okay, so day three of BHB, uh, again, this is uh, uh, Wednesday in the afternoon or this Thursday in the afternoon. Um, it's right before I take my, my BHB and I'm, I look at it before I drink it. That's the cool part of the story, is that the glucose is still really good for me in the afternoon and those ketones are nearly three. So, uh, and what's happening in the evening is I really don't have the cravings I was having. So here's day four, Dr. Ross ratio 42. Uh, and again, this is really good for me. Um, usually my ketones will hang out around 0.9, 1.1, 0 0.8. So I would never have that good of a Dr. Boz ratio in the middle of the afternoon on a non-fasting day. Um, so, and this was Friday night. Um, so by, it was day five. And again, I, not, I, kept, I kept getting all this kind of not hate mail, but like, you, you can't count it, you're drinking ketones. And I'm like, I'm drinking them somewhere between like one and four o'clock every afternoon. Uh, and so on day five, this was Friday afternoon and we had an event to go to that night. And so here I've done this five days in a row. And I just can't believe how much easier it is for me to eat a small amount at supper time. I do not have the cravings. I totally did not go for, I was praying through it, honestly, like as you look at cravings, I talked to all of my addicts about this, that uh, there is something powerful and spiritual about saying when you're struggling with something, 
I use my faith. I say, all right, come on, God, help me get through this moment. Uh, I don't really need it. And that conversation uh, went much easier. <laughs> so I think God likes my ketones or something. But it was, it was great. I could not believe how, how nice that turned out. All right, so um, I think that's the last one. But uh, yeah, I think it's the last one. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so if I look at that, I am going to, um, let's go turn this off and turn on the keynote. Yeah, so hold on there. Um, I am just gonna push play and talk a little bit more about. Um, so if, uh, is that where I'm at? I'm gonna go here actually. All right, so here's a couple things that I had patients ask about and they should have asked about it because this is definitely confusing. Um, and that is who's first when it comes to metabolism and your ketones. So when you look at this, this is a picture of a mitochondria. And I think it's the most beautiful picture of mitochondria, by the way. Uh, and there's tiny little mitochondria in every one of your cells. And they're where you're, when we say burn a ketone, when we say burn the glucose, we're talking about this. And when you look at the rules of making ketones, which I did an, a great job of going through in the book, you cannot make ketones when your insulin is high. Uh, and your insulin's gonna be high when your sugar's high. If you look at my uh, type one diabetics who have 300 sugars, 200 sugars, how do I get their bodies to make ketones? Um, first, we have to turn on their ketones. And inside these little mitochondria, if, if a ketone is around, it will actually burn ahead of the glucose. The cells are, they prefer ketones, but the access to them is absent. If you go back and watch the, the videos where I was taking our, this type one diabetic who was not a keto, keto, I said, you cannot change a thing about what you eat until you've been s sipping on these ketones in a can for at least two to three weeks. And in my mind, what I was imagining for her was there are receptors that take the ketones from circulation and they put them into your cells. These same receptors are at your blood brain barrier. And if you look at how strong and, and flexible and, and agile these little receptors are, these little transporters are, uh, they're gonna be, th uh, they're gonna be uh, looking at a flexibility relative to what's been going on in their blood. Meaning if you haven't had a ketone circulate for anything but a flash of a moment in the last decade, guess what? Your receptors are going to be very low. If you've been pumping insulin into your system with, uh, without uh, any chance of burning ketones, or making a ketone, uh, th this receptor is going to be very sleepy. I need him to wake up. The medical term for that is called upregulate. They've just been dormant. They aren't being used. The body won't put energy into it. And the rate that your body can burn a ketone first depends on how well those receptors are doing at taking those ketones from circulation and putting them into the mitochondria. And as I would do a really good job of fasting, by the end of my fast, my receptors for ketones were much better and they were, I was producing ketones better and burning them better. But then I would do these naughty things like have a glass of wine at the end of my fast. And that will stop those receptors from taking, you're not gonna have very many, I mean, alcohol will get burned before the ketones. Ketones will get burned before glucose, but the ketones have to be available and your transporters have to be awake. So by sipping on ketones for this past week, you can quickly see what I did to my system. I woke it up. All right, so let's talk more about that. So ketones, we have different ways that we can help you make ketones. And again, I get beat up by other uh, medical doctors saying, you're just using the supplements. And I'm like, yeah, kind of like I use a blood pressure medicine when the patient comes in and they're way too sick to control the blood pressure with diet and exercise. We need to help them, bridge them to a place where they don't need prescriptions anymore. But that doesn't mean we don't use the tools when in front of us. So the two big places that you can use a ketone um, is, uh, that you can make a ketone from in the supplement world are called BHB, and that's what's in that side. Um, BHBs are salts. Uh, they are, have been around for four or five decades. Uh, they used to be super expensive to make. They're still rather expensive to make. Um, and they don't taste awful like a ketone esters do, but they don't taste great. So almost everything that has uh, ketone salts in them has a sweetener like a stevia or a monk fruit or some sort of uh, assistance with the taste. 
The other side of that equation is something called MCT. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. All right, so let's start with the salts. BHB salts, what are they? So they are beta hydroxybutyrate, BHB. Um, I call them ketones in a can <laughs> because you literally drink them. And I also make the ones called ketones in a capsule. So here's what happens. You take those ketones in and literally within minutes you can measure the ketones and I've seen mine get up to like, actually my sons were 6.5 one time when he was checking them live with me on one of the shows that we were, we were, I made him a bet that it would help his acne and if I won the bet he had to come on my show and we checked him live and I was like, why are your ketones so high? I'm like, oh, we took a drink right before we started recording. So literally you can measure these ketones going up. And in fact, when I was using uh, supplements for my patients and I would have some supplements where they just would not change their ketone numbers, that's what got me so irritated that I said, all right, I cannot, I, I'm, a, I, I'm used to being able to expect to have a like an FDA approval that they check what's in these supplements. And I just found myself frustrated. I found patients frustrated when we would give them ketones, they'd spend this good money, and then they would check their numbers and they weren't, they should be high. There's no, there's, there's, it's not hard to absorb salt. These are salts. And so that's where I said, all right, we're gonna produce these little turkeys. Uh, so the other part though is in the literature, it says that you burn these for two to three hours. Now, as I prepare for this talk this week at the um, uh, Puerto Rico uh, Ketone Conference, I uh, have been studying metabolism and the studies on what happens when we supplement ketones in cancer patients, but also in healthy patients. And as much as the mm, biochemistry book says they are gone by two to three hours, for people whose metabolism is already on the ketogenic, um, train, I mean, they're, meaning they're, they're not insulin resistant, it's amazing to me how long, once you added the ketones to their system, it started to churn things. Like their liver was producing ketones because there's no way those salts lasted those seven hours, um, but they were clearly burning more ketones. They were churning a higher metabolism after the supplement. And again, this was unexpected by the by the um, team that was measuring it. Uh, this was one study that was uh, done in uh, Dr. Dom Agus Diagostino's lab where his, he would draw the blood and the blood was sent to another lab. So he got the results back. He had checked ketones out to about four hours, I think it, maybe it was four and a half hours. And he was expecting the ketones to be back down to normal. I mean, all the books say it should be normal by then. And he was like, I don't understand. We checked it right before they left. And of course they can't see point of care. They're sending it off to the really expensive way to check ketone numbers, not, not the finger pricks. Uh, and he's like, we got them back two days later. And of course the experiment's over and the patients are gone. And they're like, um, that didn't work because they were still rising. The ketones were still rising which is again, I forgot that I ever read that if I had read it before until I'm doing my own numbers this past week saying, all right, why is it when I drink these ketones on my Sunday, Sunday um, show that I, they are so much better for the two to three days afterwards? So this past week as I did them every day, uh, I, and I was doing a lot of reading and one day my ketones were so good. <laughs> yeah, best for beginners, easiest way to achieve ketosis is the, uh, is the ketogenic diet. It was the ketones in a can or ketones in a capsule. So um, the, the beauty of when I was struggling is adding these uh, extra ketones for a couple hours is something I had done to like improve my mental performance when I was writing. Like I wanted to concentrate, I needed to not have distractions. I've just been struggling. Uh, is anybody ever gonna read this book? Cause I, I, I need to get it focused. And anyway, I, I like doing a good job. And so I'm kind of hard on myself. I know that, but uh, I really was like, all right, I need to not read any more papers about ketones and write. <laughs> so this week I had a day where I got two chapters done in one day. Um, and then I dove into the metabolism of cancer and ketones. And that was ooh, a pile of articles. Anyway, so in looking at these uh, two products that are out there, um, one of them is got the sugar substitute in it. That's what I just drank a minute ago. Um, but my husband and many of my patients are allergic to stevia. So they, I have, my husband takes capsules. So the capsules are simply BHB salts put in a capsule with nothing else in them, just the salts. Now the salts have to be combined chemically with magnesium, uh, calcium, uh, sodium, uh, or potassium. And 
I chose magnesium, sodium, and calcium to put them with because uh, everybody's low on magnesium. Anyway, so what you find in there are beta-hydroxybutyrate and the salts. But um, I would warn you that the, the amount, in, if you take those capsules open and you just put them in a cap, uh, it takes, I think, 10 capsules to get you a dose of, uh, and it might even only be like, not even a full dose of a scoop of ketones. Uh, so between 10 and 15 capsules to, to be what you would find the BHB in one of those, uh, in a scoop of the powder that I just had. So for my husband, uh, when he was uh, struggling, he would have to take about eight capsules before he could see his finger uh, stick increase in those ketones. But since he kind of churned his system, he's been able to take four to five of them and really be able to see an improvement. So I just want to warn you that the, it is much more potent to take the powder than it is to take the capsules. People who take the capsules uh, should be metabolically stronger and might not want to have a sugar substitute. I have lots of patients who are insulin resistant and I push them to take the capsules because then nothing else is getting in our way. It's, the capsules are big and the capsules, um, I mean, I think I don't like taking cap, I don't like taking pills, so I don't like them. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so the other th way I say this is eat your ketones, let the supplement do the work. And boy, can I uh, show you how much that made a difference this past week. Okay, medium chain triglycerides are the other half of this coin. These are fats and as actually on Amazon right now, those are available. So ketones last about three hours or they peak at about three hours and um, the MCT C8C10 oil, this is again, a fat, a very specific kind of fat. And when you take the supplements of C8C10, which uh, I have in a powder form and I also have in these soft gels, um, this fat is not very easy to um, tolerate for people who have a yucky, kind of irritable gut. So when you first start on C8C10, um, MCT C8C10, uh, I tell folks, be careful. Uh, you can cause a diarrhea uh, w if you put too much fat into a very damaged gut early. I tell them, start with those salts, start with the BHB, get your numbers looking nice and solid before you add the C8C10. Now, you can add C8C10 and you can watch to see that some people say, I had no problem. I'm like, great, that means your, your gut lining was able to uh, do the absorption just as it's supposed to. But I can't tell you the number that I've said. I gave up, I tried your C8C10, I had loose stools, it was super embarrassing. I did not want, to, I don't wanna do that again. Uh, the other part that I find really powerful is these soft gels are super tiny. I mean, not super tiny, but they're, you can start with one capsule a day. And, and if you're checking out on your gut to see does it work, it is amazing when you just take one and then once you don't have diarrhea from one, then you take two and then you don't have, then you take three. Uh, so the C8C10, uh, I think are, um, the power in MCT C8C10 is that your liver is making these and it will make ketones for up to six hours. So as you look at that, it boosts this metabolic strength. You kind of feed the, the liver this, or this, uh, this special fat, this uh, fat that's eight to 10 carbons long. And really it does spark your liver to produce these fresh ketones that are now going to be delivered to your cell cells for several hours. So again, MCT C8C10, very important in understanding what that really is. So I love this teaching. This uh, chapter took me uh, almost a month to get everything figured out where, from the real experts, what really happens here. So this is where I'm adamant about saying, look on the labels of MCT. It is super cheap to put C12 into these MCT oil uh, powders. Um, but what they're looking at, what that C stands for is a carbon. What the eight stands for is there's eight of them. And if you look along the bottom there, the first one has four carbons, then six, then eight, then 10 carbons, 12 carbons, 14 carbons. Uh, these carbons are chains of fat. And if you look at what we're, trying to help you with is a very special sized fat that is eight to 10 carbons long. Um, when I was researching this, one of the guys who does not do science, but he's super funny. He's like, well, there's gotta be a place naturally you can find this on earth. And uh, I was looking in the animal studies at the library <laughs> and it, the librarian and I were trying to find what is the most abundant uh, researched place that C8 and C10 are looked at. And it turns out to be the, the breast milk of rats. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh my word. And when I told my friend this, he's like, you have completely grossed me out. I am never, never <laughs> gonna have that. But our own uh, hum human breast milk actually is very rich in medium chain triglycerides. Uh, very good for babies. They do not need to have enzymes to uh, digest those fats. They simply absorb them, which is what makes them so unique and, and important in this diet, that a healthy gut should still be able to absorb them. Uh, when you look at where these things come from, <laughs> this is my, uh, my uh, pitch to say, be careful, coconut oil is a great source of it, but people say, I don't take supplements, I just have the coconuts. And I'm like, I know, but coconuts um, are mostly not medium chain triglycerides. You do find it in coconuts, but most of the fat found in a coconut is a long chain uh, tri uh, fat chain, a long chain triglyceride. With those long chains, they have to go through the same absorption process as butter, as uh, heavy cream, as cheese, any other fat uh, still needs to uh, be digested, which means your body needs to secrete the enzymes, it needs to put it in a little um, around the bile salts and then it needs to be put through your lymph system to make sure that there's no toxins in it. Um, it it's a very calculated process how your fats get absorbed if you look at c8c10 they have the ability to be uh, excuse me yeah there's a very calculated process of how fats get digested. C8 and C10 have the unique uh, chemical properties that they can be absorbed and skip the digestion. It hops right into this vein that ports them over to the liver and boom, those mitochondria in the liver. And that's where your ketones are made is the liver. Uh, they get fed C8, C10 and you will have increased blood pr pr production of ketones for the better part of five to six hours. And again, I push you to test it. People who drink a bunch of MCT and wonder why they don't make ketones, um, sometimes their chemistry just isn't ready for that. Uh, their, their ketone uh, production is really slow. They're not absorbing a lot of this fat because of an unhealthy gut. And that's why I tell you, be careful, look at your numbers. You should have high ketones from these if you've got a healthy absorption, uh, especially within an hour. I mean, for sure within an hour of taking MCT, you should have really good looking um, ketones. And if you don't, it means back up in the algorithm, go to the salts. Uh, otherwise you're wasting your money and you're gonna spend a lot of time with a sore bottom on the toilet. Um, all right, so ketosis, it can come from salts, which you can find in ketones in a capsule, ketones uh, in the powder. It can come from this combination, which I put both uh, the salt mixed with C8, C10 powder into one, um, I love this stuff, I think it tastes great, but again, you want a metabolism that's keto adapted if you're gonna use this. Um, and then finally, you've got the soft gels, which are simply the C8, C10, uh, and again, start out in tiny increments to test what your gut is up to. Um, again, the whole point of this is we like to improve your health one ketone at a time here at Dr. Boz. Um, I do wanna make sure I close the loop on um, the Dr. Boz ratio. Again, glucose divided by ketones is what we're looking at. Um, I didn't, uh, that's how I did that one. All right, before I give away that code, I'm gonna go over and just see if there's some um, comments worth uh, talking about, because I do think this topic is really valuable. Um, I had lots of my patients, uh, or lots of the folks that come to my group saying, why did you use the salts? Why didn't, you're keto adapted, why didn't you use the fats? And what I was trying to do was control for, um, uh, I just wanted to boost my metabolism for a short period of time and see what happened. So I used only BHB salts. Um, I used them every afternoon. I used one scoop and um, I like, I think it tastes really good when I mixed it with uh, heavy whipping cream and ice. So sometimes I just drink it with water like I do on, on, on the show. But sometimes I, um, uh, if I if I just want to comfort myself, <laughs> I would add a little heavy cream uh, and some ice. And the the part the reason I did that instead of doing the powder which has MCT C8 C10 in it was I didn't want to push the metabolism of ketones any other way except one. I wanted to look at just that one impact. So <laughs> let me. Mm. All right. So here's um, Beth uh, Acton said, will raising your ketones in the evening cause sleeplessness? That's super important. Uh, so here comes your question right along. Wait, let me actually remove the uh, Dr. Boz, uh, this one if I go. 
there we go. Uh, so she, that's a good question because that, um, uh, that was one of my other fears, is that I am a huge, if, if you go to any of my workshops, I do a couple of teaching things for Department of Defense on brains of addiction. I've got another workshop coming up in uh, early December, uh, December 3rd and 4th out in Rapid City, South Dakota. Again, trying to teach therapists about what is it that we should be paying attention to for brains of addiction. And you can't get out of that workshop without understanding how powerful sleep is. So. Uh, remember, ketones are a fuel, just like if you were gonna drink sugar right before you go to bed. Now, the sugar would cause the insulin to go up and the insulin does cause you to get tired, so that might help people go to sleep. <laughs> but um, if you're gonna do just ketones, you're gonna have energy for several hours. I mean, it is an increased metabolism. Uh, so when you put ketones into a type one diabetic, let's just start with somebody who's those little receptors that take them from the circulation and put them inside the cell, or they take them from the uh, circulation and put them inside the brain, uh, those are, her receptors weren't awake. So she would drink the ketones, and I knew that most of them she was gonna pee out uh, for the first few days. Uh, what I was trying to do is wake up those receptors, and I can tell you as soon as she was able to take those ketones from circulation and put them in her cells, she called me and said, I'm just, I have so much energy and I'm not hungry. And I'm like, yeah, ketones suppress your appetite. Um, and so this is where I said, you gotta check your sugars. I know they've been 300, so we have a ways to go, but we do not wanna jump, drop it too fast and um, we do need to watch your insulin as we do that. Same thing for me, is I had been kind of, uh, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, uh, you know, doing great job in my fasting, but not doing such a good job the rest of the week. Um, I, I mean, I was keto, it was one meal a day, but I was doing some things that my sugars would go higher, my ketones would go lower, and I wasn't, um, I wasn't as focused and my energy was, eh, it was slumpy. So as I looked to uh, what do I, I did not want to cause a sleep deprivation. I have plenty of other things that get me up at night. Please don't keep me awake from high energy. Um, that, so that's why I dosed my ketones. Uh, I wanted it to cover me during my hardest to cover time, which is the evenings when I got snacks and when I would find those macadamia nuts. But I didn't, um, I didn't have uh, the, uh, I didn't have sleeplessness. Um, the whole week, actually, I slept really good. I just saw one I really want to answer there. So Rusty7406 says, can ketones affect alcohol cravings? And that's an awesome question. So in my, in my clinic, uh, um, again, I've taken the patients that I add to my clinic way down. Not only am I looking to move my practice to a different state, uh, but I also am trying to write this book. So uh, as I look at the few patients that I still um, have, in a in a intense medical care, it's it's addiction, and you can't be a patient in my practice uh, for addiction uh, without understanding what ketones do for cravings. And it isn't, um, I mean, alcohol cravings are actually kind of complicated. Um, they've been practiced a long time. So from sleep to head injuries, to depression, to how long they've been alcoholic, um, all of those things definitely weigh into the cravings. But it's an amazing process when I don't tell them anything about the ketogenic diet. I actually gift them ketones and say, this is fuel for your brain. And I'm not lying, but it's, I don't try to explain all this to them, they don't care. Uh, what they want is to feel better and they don't wanna have cravings. So if you've ever seen somebody come off of, um, the, of alcohol, uh, it's not uncommon for them to reach for glucose um, because those ketones and those carbohydrates and that insulin, and as you try to change all that in a person, poof, they, do not, they do not do so good. Um, uh, so let's just do a couple other things. Uh, it says, Ken Anderson, how do I lower my glucose? Um, and um, lowering the glucose uh, is um, something where you wanna make sure you're checking glucose and ketones. So I would bet that if your glucose is high, your ketones are low. And so what I would push you to do is I would, I would uh, use exogenous ketones to raise the ketones before you start doing much of anything else. Uh, and the reason you wanna do that is as soon as you can get ketones available in those mitochondria. And again, if you look at the first few times people take these ketones, their receptors are low, they're not in good shape. And if they're healthy enough that they can make it through the transition and they don't need the supplement, good on them. I, I am happy for them. That is plenty of patients. It is the ones that struggle 
that I am trying to seek out and say, this is doable, there's just this little biohack that you need to learn. Put the ketones in circulation long enough to get your cells used to uh, using that, uh, key, that receptor. And wow, it's amazing how that changes um, their metabolism, their hunger, their eating habits. But um, with those ketones, I've been telling patients they gotta sip on it all day long. Uh, you know, stop around five o'clock, but just keep that water bottle full, try to sip on it all day long, and we're just trying to add ketones in, because unlike me, I have a metabolism that was easy to, to charge. I was easy to, um, to, to churn my metabolism. Most of my patients that are starting out are insulin resistant. So they put ketones in and they pee them out. And if it takes them three days to have another dose of it, I'm like, okay, you're not going to wake up your receptors if you keep flashing ketones around every once in a while. You need to keep it in circulation. And that's where uh, just, it's a great experiment once when they're struggling. So when I look at people who have a high glucose, you know, they have this glucose that's too high. First of all, praise God you're checking it because it is such a powerful predictor of your long-term health. Um, but as you look at glucose in the, um, in the other spaces of its predictors. Uh, you know, Ken, I would ask you to clean up the evening, just like I have to struggle with this. Um, you know, I have lots of my, my insulin resistant patients that don't get to eat after, after three o'clock. We didn't start there. We started nothing after seven. And if they did that for four or five days and their glucose was still above 100 in the morning, then we went nothing after six. And then if they, their glucose in the morning was still too high, then we went nothing after five. And they kept backing up uh, the, the time that they would eat because you need to empty uh, the liver uh, enough to, to actually push your body to make ketones. Uh, but you wanna prepare for that because it's going to be a much easier transition. If your little receptors that take ketones from circulation and put them into your cells, if they're awake and ready, you're gonna like this a lot better. Your success is gonna be much better. All right, so here's another patient says, the name is D, and not a patient, sorry, uh, DW2CB. <laughs> Dr. Boz, capsules have a daily dose of up to four capsule, uh, up to four capsules, up to three times per day which would last a week at max dose, right. So this is the problem with those ketones in a capsule. I know that they're, um, yeah, ketones are still expensive no matter how you cut it. I know it looks like a smaller priced item, but I would push you to have ketones on the shelf, uh, ketones in a capsule. I keep them on the shelf for when I know, I don't wanna put these things sweet in, like even just having this um, stevia supplement. Sometimes, uh, especially earlier, it's not so bad now, but probably nine months ago, if I would have had stevia, uh, it would I would want sugar, but I've gotten much better about that. So I could now have the supplement and I don't really crave anything. But there was a time in this transition where adding sugar to my, the taste of sugar, even though it was fake sugar, uh, it just made me want it more. So in the, in the ketones in a capsule, uh, that, that's not, I mean, it's, it's a great thing to have around. I'll put it in my pocket if I, need, if I say, okay, I really need to get through this. I know I'm gonna, not gonna have time for a meal and I don't wanna be tempted by something that isn't fun. So I'll put that in my pocket. Um, that's where the ketones in a capsule are the best for. So think of it as an advanced option. When you're a newbie, just take the supplement of ketones in a can and um, there's plenty of options out there. I mean, I, I love it when people support the channel by using the products, but you know what? I am all about finding what access you have. And then I just push you to make sure you check your numbers because that's how I ended up in this dang supplement business anyway, is that I got sick and tired of my patients spending their money uh, on brands that just, yeah, I got irritated. Okay, anyway. Um, all right, so we'll do a couple more, let's see. Okay, so I love uh, Tish Mata, 10 years clean and sober. First of all, praise God, that is awesome. I, I have some 10 years uh, in my practice who it's so amazing to watch their life transition. But she goes, still have occasional cravings. Now, after 18 months keto, 
I can tell if I am craving alcohol, my ketones are low. And so this is a great feed into the question a little bit earlier saying, do ketones help with alcohol cravings? And I'm telling you, your brain runs better when uh, the ketones are what they use for energy. And so uh, Tish Mata is uh, absolutely on to the right answer there, which is if you can give your brain the best fuel, which is ketones. Uh, and again, the first time you swallow them, that receptor is not gonna get it from the circulation into your brain. It's got to see them often enough to wake up. But if you've been keto for several months and you're feeling a little snarky, uh, yeah, best antidote, add some ketones. Do not mix it with alcohol. The alcohol will out trump. It will be the, it will be more of a higher priority to get burned than the ketone. So if you look at the priority of burning fuel, glucose is near the mitochondria and can be burned. But if a ketone is there, the mitochondria prefers it. Now, the, 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 Part that's kind of confusing is your body won't make a ketone when there's a bunch of glucose around. And that's where this gap of people are stuck saying, but I've been on insulin for six years, but my blood sugar is 300, but my, um, I, you know, I've got a, a big tummy, you know, they're insulin resistant, they're pre-diabetic or diabetic. So how do you hack it? Uh, you put in ketones and then it will get, it will slip in front of that glucose and get burned once that receptor starts to put it inside the cells unless you add alcohol. And then alcohol pushes away the ketone, pushes away the glucose, and the alcohol goes through first. So you halt ketosis production when you have alcohol, and you really slow down the metabolism of ketones um, when alcohol is present. So, so the uh, Sherry Howard says, does taking powdered BHB break a fast? All right, so this is exactly where I was talking about at the beginning of what I kind of was being stubborn about was hey, I, I haven't been fasting for 18 months. I don't wanna go backwards, I'm, I was doing well. But I had these habits where um, I had graduated to salt and water only in my fast, which is like the premier perfect fast. Um, I'd have maybe some black coffee or some, peak, some of the teas that I like to have. Um, but really in the last probably five months, I've kept it to salt, water, black coffee, and um, these little teas. Um, that, that's it. Uh, but then I started adding uh, naughty habits to the time when I wasn't fasting. Uh, so in, in this past week, the reason I added BHB back to my fast and back to my, um, my daily routine was to enhance my metabolism and suppress my cravings, suppress my, uh, my hunger in, in, at night. So to answer the question, does it break your fast? Um, it's a fuel. Uh, technically it breaks your fast. So does bone broth, so does coffee, so does tea. They, salt and water is what doesn't break your fast. But that's, for, that's an advanced level of fasting. Don't try to reach for that. Start here and as you get better, as you add a little bit more skill and add a little bit more skill and add a little more skill, you're gonna say, oh, um, I can finally do a complete fast of salt and water only. Um, and what I've learned is when people try to hop over and say, ha, I did it, um, they do what I was doing, which was either they celebrate when they're done <laughs> or they have a binge uh, cycles afterwards. So don't try to reach for that if you're not ready. But if you're ready, go for it. The other ultimate way is to say, what is the ending fast? Uh, or, you know, what breaks your fast? Check your numbers. Because if you ate something that broke your fast, your ketones will go down and your glucose will go up. So your Dr. Bob's ratio will go up. And that's like the ultimate way. Like I can tell you what most metabolisms will answer to, but I'm totally guessing based on where you're at in your metabolic strength. All right, so we're gonna check my numbers and then we're gonna give away a free book here. Okay, so all right, we're at the end of the hour. And again, some really good number, really good questions here. So thank you for asking them. Thank you for watching. Um, you know, I, I've had a couple of, uh, newbies write in and say, how do I, how do I, how do I? And uh, I have learned to push them to say, go to my website and look for this little um, pocket guide, which is the basic rules for newbies. And I do the same thing I've been doing in my practice for many years, which is start out with something good that you can have, something better and something best. So just like that question on fasting, um, I would say, depends on where you're at in your strength of fasting, if you would. Um, so I have ketones and glucose that we're watching. <laughs> my glucose went up um, and my ketones are still counting down. Here we go, here we go. How are we gonna get? 
always this moment of truth for me. So 2.6. I can't, actually can't remember what they were at the beginning. So <laughs> I'll have to scroll back and look. I'm sorry. Uh, so each time when I see my glucose go up, it reminds me, it, yes, I get stressed out about this show. Uh, I like to do a good job. And when I, you can tell, <laughs> when I get stressed, my sugar goes up. My cortisol rises. Okay. So um, just to kind of make sure that I bring that full, full home, that's what is in here is a good, better, best for each of the categories. Um, you also get a fridge guide, which is what this thing is on the back here. Instead of books and charts, I found that put the, put the information in a very simple, uh, you know, here is where is a minimum level of um, keto rules. Here's a little bit better, and here's the ultimate, here's the best. So if you're looking for that progression, I've found, you know, lots of folks do want a basic um, understanding of the keto diet that's easy for their... Um, easy for their uh, reference. So um, before I head over there, I just wanna say a couple of things about um, if you have uh, found uh, the book on Amazon, not on Amazon, uh, in bookstores and in the libraries, there are, there's a website out there that says, um, like Barnes and Noble, if you buy it there, they want to see if you have a review for it there. So as many of you know, the only way I am doing this is because people wrote reviews on Amazon about the book and I'm super thankful. Uh, it was a true moment of courage when I pushed print, thank God for my husband, uh, saying, no, the people could learn from this and so many of you have. Thank you for writing the reviews. It's the only way my book has sold to other people. I don't have a publishing company. I am self-published. Uh, the same thing is happening for these books that are in bookstores and in the library. So if you are looking for a, um, a moment of gratitude, I would so love to see your reviews on that website as well. And um, just thank you. So let's see here. I am going to hop over and give away uh, the, final, uh, the final code. Was there anything I was gonna do before I do that? Um, I guess I'll see, the, see you in Puerto Rico. Uh, I will have a pre-scheduled um, uh, show. It's probably gonna be a lot of what I'm studying this week to get ready for my, my uh, talk in Puerto Rico. So let's see, all right, we're gonna go here and I am going to uh, push play. And so go, get ready for typing in this number for somebody to get a free book um, again, um, I want you to go to audible.com forward slash ACX promo and, um, and then the other one is for the UK and here is the number eight P Q T Q R H H W N B Q C. All right. That's a wrap, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for your questions. And I will see you in Puerto Rico. Whoever does get the book, I really loved it last week when the guy posted, yay, I got it at one. Because uh, again, I have, um, I've tried this. Uh, last week it worked, so I'm just gonna assume it's gonna work this week, but um, it's great to hear who wins, so thank you. All right, everybody, we are improving your health one ketone at a time. Signing off, Dr. Boz. See you next week.